stories hold a special place in the human heart and mind. They're easy to remember, morally instructive, and, more often than not, quite enjoyable. So with that in mind, I'm going to share a number of my personal stories with you today. They all may differ from one another in the details, but they share one big thing in common. They can teach you a lot about me, because they taught me a lot about myself. And just a word of warning before we get into them. These stories cover some very deep topic matter, and they happened at some of the most foundational moments in my life. So I caution you against taking them too lightly. Now, in first grade, I peed my pants. There was nothing pretty about it, but it wasn't my fault, you see. See, I'd asked the teacher if I could go to the bathroom, but she said I couldn't since there was somebody already out in the bathroom. And that person, well, they were taking their sweet time. So I just kind of sat there in quiet agony until, before I knew it, the deed was done. Below me lay a giant clearish yellowish puddle, and my pants adequately reflected the situation as well. Now, I knew this meant two things. One, there would be social repercussions. You see, first graders aren't allowed to pee their pants. Kindergartners, maybe. Preschoolers, definitely. But first graders, definitely not. Secondly, I knew that if my teacher found out, well, that'd be a whole nother basket of goodies. But I was a smart little boy, you see. I had noticed that just seconds before my incident, my classmate had dropped the contents of his entire water bottle all over the floor. In fact, his accident was what allowed mine to go unnoticed. So, when the teacher came over and asked, Dave, what happened? I quickly responded, I dropped my water. She didn't buy it. Turns out water isn't yellowish. So she asked one more time, David, what really happened? And I said, that it was actually juice. She bought it. She actually bought it. <laughs> she brought me over to the side and she said, David, you know we don't bring juice to school. And I said that I completely understood. There was no chance I would do something so irresponsible in the future. And then all the little kitties grabbed paper towels and cleaned up my pee. I mean juice. <laughs> so why do I tell this story? Well. I questioned the morality of my actions that day. You see, I had always been told that lying was wrong, but I had just saved myself a bunch of headaches by doing just that. Was it really worth it to tell the truth and face social persecution at the hands of vicious seven-year-olds? Or were my actions justified? My little brain had stumbled upon an ethical inquiry, and I think about it to this day. Questions and life experiences like this have encouraged me to study philosophy and psychology, and find out how others have answered what I like to call the PP problem. <laughs> I might not always agree with what they have to say, but it's always worth hearing them out. For my second traumatic childhood story, we hop over to second grade. I was sat there in class and it was snack time, so we kiddies had a little free time to do as we pleased. Two girls in the class said to each other, hey, let's go check out how our plants are growing. And I, being the ladies' man that I was, and still am, by the way, <laughs> I said to them, hey, wait up, and followed after. Now, our plants were by the window. Now, understandable, they needed sunlight after all. But also by the window was a table. And on that table were three things of importance for this story. One, a stack of folders. Two, a freshly brewed mug of coffee. And three, a stack of freshly written papers. Now, in my great haste to catch up with my lady friends, my arm had accidentally knocked into the stack of folders, which in turn knocked into that mug of coffee, which in turn spilled its contents all over those essays. I was frozen. There was no chance I could lie my way out of this one. Before I knew it, the teacher had re-entered the room and was asking who did it. Suddenly, a group of 20 second graders encircled me. They shot up their grubby little arms and pointed their Cheeto-dusted fingers straight in my direction. <laughs> the worst part of it all, the true dagger in my back, was when my best friend Austin joined in. He was the last to enter the circle, but I swear he was the proudest of them all. 
It was a true A2 Brutus moment for me. <laughs> now, if any of you know me well, you'll know that I'm often very critical of myself. I spent the rest of snack time crying into my goldfish. When I got home, my mom could clearly tell that something was wrong. She asked what had happened. I said, oh, nothing. But she just kept digging until I eventually tearfully spilled the beans. When she heard what had happened, she said, oh, that's it? Accidents happen. It was beyond your control. And after a few more hours of sulking around, I started to agree with her. And that's actually the biggest lesson I took out of this one. It's that sometimes things are beyond your control. You can't always bear the weight of the world on your shoulders. The second lesson I took out of this, if I can put it metaphorically, is that you've got to keep an eye on where your limbs are at. Don't get so distracted by your goals that you forget how you're acting on your journey towards those goals. The ends very rarely justify a moral means, and it's those little actions repeated day after day that make us who we are, not the so-called rewards at the so-called finish line. And the last lesson I took out of this was that you have to stick by your friends. Even if everyone else is standing against them, you have to be courageous and do what's in their best interest. Otherwise, you might end up getting called out in a TEDx talk. <laughs> now, my last childhood story actually occurred before the other two, but I mention it now because it could have ended far, far worse. I was about five years old at the time, and I was sat there on my living room floor. Next to me was my neighbor, and her eyes were glued to the TV, but mine were glued to far, something far more exciting. My favorite toy, magnetics. Now, magnetics were a modern marvel. They were basically Legos that harnessed the awesome power of magnetism. And among them, I had a favorite piece. It was a small magnetic ball about the size of a marvel. I looked at one of them, and in a stroke of sheer brilliance, I thought to myself, hey, I could be a fountain. And since I had been told from a young age to follow my dreams, I decided to give it a try. I nudged my neighbor, said, watch this, and then loaded three of them into my mouth. I sent the first one out, decent height, decent distance, but I knew I could do better. I gave the second one a little more oomph, and sure enough, it went a little higher and a little farther. This last one, this last one was going to be the one. So I cocked that baby back further into my throat than I had the other two, and I was ready to send it flying. Unfortunately, when I went to fire, it didn't quite exit the barrel. It stayed stuck in my throat, and rather deep in my throat at that. I thought to myself, hey, no biggie, I can just swallow. So I gave that a try, it didn't work. I tried swallowing a little harder, it still didn't work. And before I knew it, I was choking. <laughs> but the funniest part about that was that I didn't know what choking was at the time. <laughs> I tried to get my neighbor's attention, and uh, show her what was happening to me, but uh, her eyes had been drawn back to the TV. Turns out my show wasn't very entertaining. I eventually made eye contact with my mother in the other room, and by this point, I was purple. She made a huge commotion, my grandmother came running in, and she started the Heimlich maneuver. And on the third thrust, that baby flew the farthest of them all. Then and there, I learned virtually nothing from that event. My mom and dad told me I could no longer play with magnetics. I asked why. They said, you almost died. I said, so what? <laughs> Needless to say, I was far too young to grasp the gravity of that situation, that I could have sustained serious injury, and that I could have even died. And that's just it. Life can truly end at any moment on account of the most absurd things. And that's why it's so important to live intentionally, to make every moment count. But in order to do this, you need to figure out now, as opposed to later, what you truly believe in and value. To do this, I'd encourage you to take a stroll down memory lane yourself. You see, these lessons that are presented today, they're especially important for me because these events took place in my life. Reflecting on the memories and stories that come to your mind will show you which lessons are especially important for you. Think back to a time when you didn't act like you know you should have. Figure out what specifically went wrong and resolve to making the right choice the next time you find yourself in a similar situation. But also important is to recognize when you've gleaned most all useful information out of a story and now need to let go. 
Learn to forgive yourself, because relentlessly beating yourself up makes you we weaker, not stronger. And lastly, these stories have to do with what you make of life's purpose, whether you realize it or not. That first story has me thinking about my desire to live honestly and courageously. The second, my desire to stay focused on my goals, yet act consciously and graciously on a day-to-day -day basis. And the last, that encounter with death. There's nothing that so effectively forces us to take a step back and consider our views about the afterlife, God, and the meaning of it all. Think back in your life to a close call like the one I had, or perhaps more effectively, to the death of a loved one. But this time, don't shy away from those questions that come up. Don't just let them gradually subside. Instead, work through them, and continue to work through them every day of your life. So what's the big takeaway? Well, it comes down to this. Reflect and resolve. Find out what you've been trying to tell yourself for so long, and listen. Then, make the changes that will make you the hero in all of your stories and memories to come. Take 10 minutes out of your day today, and maybe 10 tomorrow. Make a habit out of reflection, because we're all depending on you to become the best version of yourself. And hey, before you know it, you'll have grown enough that you can confidently and courageously say, yes, that mysterious liquid on the floor is my pee. Thank you.